President Bola Tinubu today presented his very first official federal budget to the joint session of the National Assembly. He says the budget is a budget of renewed hope with security, job creation, poverty reduction as top priority. And Senator Dino Melaye, the PDP governorship candidate in Kogi State, says he will not pursue legal redress of the election. He says the judiciary has been captured. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Shonwa Kimalue in Abuja. Let's begin tonight because our conversation is going to be primarily on what President Bola Tinubu said to the National Assembly law, uh, the lawmakers today. He was accompanied by the Vice President, some top government officials, to the joint session where he presented to the lawmakers the 2024 budget, it is President Bola Tinubu's very first budget to be presented by him to the National Assembly. It's a budget of about 27 trillion naira. He tagged it a budget of renewed hope and is promising so much in that budget. That is also on the table. How will he be able to conquer the burden of the debt and the issue of poverty in the land? These are some of the issues that will be dissecting. Is there any hope in the renewed old budget of Bala Tinubu to not be dissecting these issues for you? But first, let's deal with some election matters quickly. Uh, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Kogi State, Senator Dino Melai, says his party will not challenge the outcome of the Kogi State governorship election at the tribunal. He alleges that the opposition party has captured the judiciary. Mr. Malai told journalists today at a press conference in Abuja, and calling on the National Assembly to beam its such light on the appointment of ANEC officials being nominated by the ruling party, the APC, saying they, they are not fit for the appointment. Melaye calls the National Assembly over ANEC officials' appointment to take a bold decision. Take a listen to him. Mahmoud Yakubu is the most pernicious, odious vermin that ever presided over the election management body in Nigeria, INEC. Why should any responsible Nigerian go to the tribunal when APC has captured the judiciary and their members, that's APC members, openly boast at rallies about their control of a corrupt judiciary of cash and carry? Why should other political parties and Nigerians participate in future elections with the conclusion of grip and total control of INEC through the appointment of APC card-carrying members as commissioners into INEC, who will recruit ad hoc staff, APC supporters, as pools officials. Well, that's Senator Dino Melaye, the PDP governorship candidate in the governorship election in Kogi State. Well, there seems to be some situation in that state earlier today. There was a siege on the INEC state headquarters in Lokoja, and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has been reacting to this, and it says to inform the public that the state headquarters in Lokoja was besieged this morning by a mob that barricaded all entrances to the office and prevented access to staff to carry out routine duties. INEC says that the siege also prevented Attorneys uh, representing political parties involved in the recent off-cycle elections uh, from inspecting documents and materials used in the election. It took the intervention of the Nigerian army to calm the situation down at the state headquarters. Security agencies have assured that they will maintain normalcy on the premises of INEC, and the commission says he's assuring parties and litigants that the Kogi State Office is committed to granting unimpeded access to all materials needed to prosecute their petitions. This is subcoming from INEC. We will be dissecting for you tonight the budget presented by President Tunubu. He calls it the budget of renewed hope. Stay with me, everyone. Before we get to do that, we need to serve you your political roundup stories.
The Supreme Court has ordered that the old 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1,000 Naira notes should continue to coexist with the new notes as they continue to remain legal tender until the federal government puts a process in place for its replacement or redesign after due consultation with relevant stakeholders. The seven-man panel led by Justice Inyang Okoro gave the ruling during an application by the federal government seeking an order of the court to grant an extension of time for the old Naira notes to remain in circulation as a legal tender. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Kogi State, Senator Dino Melaye, has said his party will not challenge the outcome of the Kogi State governorship election at the tribunal. He alleges that the opposition party has captured the judiciary. Mr. Melaye told journalists at a press conference in Abuja that he's calling on the National Assembly to beam its light on the appointment of INEC officials being nominated by the ruling party. What future do we have of democracy when the judiciary is captured during the bidding, doing the bidding of APC as the world is seen happening across Nigeria? There was a mild drama at the premises of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC when the commission, in line with a directive from the Imo State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, brought in all the election materials used in the November 11 off-cycle governorship elections in Imo State for inspection. While the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APCA, in line with their demands, certified the inspection of all the materials brought in by INEC, the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party refused to inspect the materials as they claim necessary modalities have not been put in place by INEC for smooth process. However, INEC maintains it has obeyed the order of the court in line with relevant provisions of the law and left no stones unturned in ensuring that all the litigants have access to the election materials. We've directed INEC, the commission, to allow four political parties, four political parties and their candidates obtain order, to allow them to inspect the uh, materials used for the conduct of uh, November 11. Government, governorship election in Imo State. The Labour Party and the PDP give reasons for refusing to participate in the exercise. APC is a party that was purportedly declared winner of the election. I told him he should also bring them in. He told me, okay, he will do that. He was yet to do that. My problem is that the place is not conducive for the process. There should be, a place, there should be some conducive environment under which some meaningful work can be done. The New Nigeria People's Party is asking President Bola Tinubu, world leaders, former Nigerian presidents, heads of state, heads of international organizations, heads of local and international security agencies, and all promoters of democracy, to counsel the Supreme Court to embrace substantial justice with respect to the Kano State Governorship election. At a peaceful protest held at the main gate of the ECOWAS Commission in Abuja, the acting national chairman of the party, Mr. Abba Ali, says that the verdict of the appeal court, which nullifies the election of the governor of Kano State, Mr. Abba Yusuf, is a miscarriage of justice. Mr. Ali explains that the verdict of the appeal court is a deliberate attempt by some members to overturn the popular will of the people of Kano for the second time, having suffered a similar fate in 2019. And finally, Governor Peter Mba of Enugu State has applauded President Bola Tinubu's economic policies, stressing that the unified foreign exchange rates policy was rubbing off positively on Enugu State's drive for foreign direct investments. The governor spoke with State House correspondents after meeting with President Tinubu in Abuja, saying that Enugu State is pushing for the construction of the cargo terminal and completion of the international wing of the Akanebiam International Airport in Enugu through collaborations with the federal government. We no longer have a seat at home in Enugu and I dare say in the southeast. We have our workers go to work on Mondays and the schools are open. Thank you so much everyone. Let's delve into our major conversation tonight. President Bola Tinobu has left Abuja for Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, today to attend the COP28 Climate Summit, which takes place on the, the 1st and 2nd December 2023, with the theme, Unite, Act, and Deliver. The president is expected to deliver a national uh, statement highlighting Nigeria's stance on various thematic issues, including renewable energy and climate financing while in Dubai, is also expected to participate in key sideline events. The president is accompanied by senior government officials.
before you left the shores of the country, President Bola Tinubu presented the first budget of his administration to the joint session of the National Assembly. The president presented a budget estimate of 27.5 trillion naira to the National Assembly, which he christened a budget of renewed hope. The president said it will ensure, uh, it will ensure microeconomic stability, poverty reduction, greater access to social security, amongst others. He highlighted priority areas such as security, local job creation, macroeconomic stability, investment, environment, optimization, human capital development, poverty reduction, and social security. The president, during the first budget presentation before the joint session of the National Assembly, says the proposed budget prioritizing all these areas will help give attention to critical areas of the Nigerian economy with the most critical resource for national development. Take a listen to President Balatinobu. The proposed budget seeks to achieve job-rich economic growth, macroeconomic stability, a better investment environment, enhanced human capital development, as well as poverty reduction and greater access to social security. Human capital is the most critical resource of national development. Accordingly, the budget prioritizes human development with particular attention to children, the foundation of our nation. <laughs> to improve the effectiveness of our budget performance, government will focus on ensuring value for money, greater transparency, and accountability. In this regard, we will work with more closely with development partners and the private sector. After, I mean, that's the president, except from the president's speech today. But before the president get to speak, he was, of course, welcomed by the Senate president, because we are probably with the chairman of the National Assembly, who is uh, the president, who is appearing before the joint session of the National Assembly, for the very first time, uh, assuming of, since assuming of his uh, in an official capacity, uh, the Senate President highlights areas like where the legislature would love the president to focus on in his effort in alleviating the poverty of millions of Nigerians. Take a listen to Goswami Apadio. Also taking note that these bold steps taken so far by this government have created some measures of economic discomfort to Nigerians. So we plead for continued support for the government to actualize the long-term benefits of these policies. The pain of today is like the pain of childbirth. When the result of the baby manifests, we will rejoice and will forget the pains of childbirth. However, we hope these budgetary estimates contain provisions to ameliorate the sufferings that the economic measures so far have exerted on our fellow citizens whom we represent. The 10th National Assembly, under our watch, is fully aligned with the President's dreams for our country. Our plans encompass comprehensive legislative actions that will contribute to nation building, economic growth, and social development. All right, then, you've heard it. Uh, a lot of speeches today, and uh, the figures are being laid down. But what is important, <laughs> take your mind off the figures, Let's look at the impact that these figures will have. Don't forget that the president has also sought the approval of the National Assembly for an 8.6 billion naira and 100 million euro external borrowing plan. He also, in the breakdown that you're seeing on your screen, uh, spells out how he hopes to go about the 27 trillion naira, which is perhaps the highest in terms of figures of the budget in Nigeria. But beyond all of that is the renewed hope that this is that. Can this actually be a renewed hope for the average Nigerian? Can he put food on your table? Can he uh, ensure money in your pocket? These are the questions that are very fundamental. A lot of people will be worried. That 9.92 trillion, the recurrent, you look at debt servicing down there, 
is another nine, uh, it's about eight trillion. So you look at a percentage of debt servicing, two to 27 trillion. What does this mean? Does it make sense? How do we get over this? We are borrowing more money. How do we go about it tonight? Uh, those who will help us dissect this and uh, make sense of it all, I've sent it to Shehu Sani, who is a former chair of the uh, Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Senator, for joining us tonight. Thank you. For I appreciate me. it. Thank you. And I also have the co-founder of Budgets, Mr. Shehu Nigmide, who joins us virtually. Thank you so much, Mr. Nigmide, for your time tonight. It's a pleasure being here today. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate it. Let, let's uh, shoot and begin with Senator Shehu Sani. You have been in the National Assembly, at least uh, you've experienced four times when a president had bowed before the Nationals, at least three or four times, uh, bowed before the, the lawmakers presenting a budget. The kind of scenario that played out today, the renewed hope that the president preached today to the lawmakers, what do you make of it? Um, uh, thank you for having me in your program once again. Well, I have carefully listened to the budget presentations and uh, from the facts, we have the figures. And um, the president said he is in his renewed hope budget, he's prioritizing job creation, uh, security and poverty alleviation. Now, if you go through the whole gamut of the budget, you will see that there are similarities between the budget we are having today and the one we have had last year. That is the emphasis on making up for the budget through borrowing. Now, assessing a budget uh, intellectually, first of all, you have to tally it against the last year's budget and then tally it against the priorities of the government and then you tally it against the reality and the needs of the country. Now, in every sense of the word, 27 trillion is about 33 billion dollars. And budgets are estimate, and as usual, uh, it's been uh, pivoted on the benchmark for crude oil, and then uh, unified exchange rate as we have it on the ground. Now, if you are to assess it, you will see that this is his first time of appearing before the National Assembly and presenting a budget. Now, you can only fairly assess him when it comes to what becomes of the budget by the end of the year. But if you are... In to, terms of budget performance. Budget, budget, budget performance and funding the budget itself. But if you look at the critical areas the country needs that intervention, which is specifically on poverty, uh, the removal of fuel subsidy and other issues has seriously led to the increase in poverty in the country. And from all the indices, uh, there are more poor people in the country now than we have had in the last two, three years. So the need to allocate resources to address this is very important. Security challenges are, are, are also issues that we, are, we have been dealing with. There has been of recent a surge in terms of uh, the collapse of security in parts of the country. So resources uh, need to be pumped in there. And uh, when you talk of job creation, uh, this has always been the mantra for every government when it comes to office, that is going to create jobs and jobs. But from what we have seen in this budget, we will fairly assess him if he was able to fund the budget and perform Below, beyond the average as far as uh, the scores are concerned. But as far as I know that the figures now shows that we are going to uh, service a debt with 8 trillion and then we're going to borrow, we're going to borrow 8 trillion and then we're going to service it with 7 trillion. It means we're not going much away from the debt as, as it is now. Yeah. And then when you also look at the the capital expenditure and the debt servicing, uh, there have been a significant improve, improvement uh, co comparative to what we have had last year. And um, debt servicing, under Buhari, uh, there was a claim that uh, almost about 70 to 80% of national debt is used to service debt. But from the figures here, I think it's within the range of 40 something percent, yeah. which wow. of course gives room 
for enough resources to be used for capital uh, purposes. So Isn't uh, that even in, in itself almost 44% or thereabouts you, uh, out of the 27 trillion is used in servicing that? Isn't that in itself huge? Well, um, the point is that for you to continue to be relevant and viable economically, I think you must be uh, financially responsible. You borrow money, you have to be, you have to pay. Yeah. Uh, if you don't pay, you cannot borrow. So if you do it, that's the way the system so we are works. We are borrowing more. So I, I just imagine for an average person watching tonight is someone who is earning a hundred thousand a month. Out of the hundred thousand, you are paying about forty-five thousand. You, 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 uh, forty-five thousand naira out of that money is used in in servicing debt. You take transportation out of it. You take feeding out of it. You imagine what is left. So I mean, just imagine and making it as as lay as lay and as uh, as it could be. Uh, that I mean, and we are borrowing more. That's the question I'm asking. Well, like I've said, um, the budget has always been an annual ritual of government. Uh, where estimation, guesstimation, and hopes are raised. But at the end of the day, uh, what becomes of it? Um, how does that budget impact on the life of people in terms of education, health, infrastructure, transportation, and so many fields in terms of poverty, alleviation, uh, the manufacturing sector? Uh, he has about, I think, eight-point agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, going by this budget, I do not think that uh, impacts can be made, but it is certainly not going to meet up the target which he has set for himself uh, as a government. So I can say it clearly that uh, this budget is not much different from the one that was inherited, but there is hope in the sense that uh, those who crafted this budget and also the elements that have been enlisted uh, to steer the economic uh, ship of state uh, are people who have over the years proven their worth, and I believe that they will do better than the last government. So uh, let me bring in Mr. Nibide into the conversation. You look at it, uh, Senator Shousani had described it uh, using a global uh, financial indices, using the dollar uh, to, to capture the essence of the, of the budget. It's about $33 billion. Uh, dollars. Uh, and in that sense, uh, the, the, the budget minister had said that there is an upward improvement on the, on the cap of the budget from about 1.5 trillion or so. Uh, the budget increased from the last budget and now. But if you look at it, what was the dollar to the Naira in exchange rate the last time? Uh, does the 1.5 trillion or thereabouts increase in the, in the budget uh, uh, total estimate? Does he leave? I mean, is there any significant difference? I'd like to know your thought in some of the figures that have emerged. The assumptions are they realistic? 750 naira per to the dollar. Um, uh, uh, they're looking at uh, seven, 77 uh, dollar uh, per bar uh, to, uh, in terms of uh, the assumption of. Uh, uh, I'm looking at um, some of the figures that we have that are probably going on the screen, the assumptions of yeah. uh, the, ba uh, the basics of the budget and whether or not those make sense in terms of the rea reality that we have on the ground. That's $77.96 uh, dollar per barrel of oil, uh, the, the, the assumption on the exchange rate and the daily production of oil. Those estimates, what do you make of it, Shion? Um, thank you so much. Um, and I get your point about the dollar equivalency issue. Um, let's first say that the projects, the prior budget, I mean, the project in the administration of uh, Muhammad Buhari, it lacked a lot of credibility um, because they threw a lot of numbers out, but they could not back it up with um, actual revenues. Um, those were the years where the budget were 11, the revenue projection was 11 trillion naira. But by the time you look at the actual revenue, uh, they didn't get up to six trillion naira uh, for most of those years. So in a way, it was just um, a borrowing galore. Um, and I think that was the big problem there. So I, I think where the budget stands now, I still feel like uh, it's still beyond, it's, it's above what we should be. I don't think our national budget should be more than 20 trillion naira in my own view. Um, because you have to benchmark against the revenue. 
um, that we are earning. But let's also to agree that uh, because of the current devaluation, uh, especially with SIPs that are in dollars, um, the federal government is going to earn more. Um, but also has challenges also on the, on the foreign settlement, debt settlement part. What I, the way I see this budget is that uh, there's a bit uh, in, of interest in resetting the macroeconomic fundamentals. Um, and, and let's not forget that that's what has pushed us into uh, fuel subsidy removal. That's what has pushed the country into the parity around uh, that's been found uh, around the exchange rate um, in some sort of way. But the clarity is that there's a bit of interest to go back to the fundamental basics, that we must reduce our, uh, our, ex our spending. We must make sure that our spending is credible. So if you look at this budget, um, a 27 trillion naira budget is what we have. We have um, the actual um, um, deficit of around nine trillion, which I feel that that deficit would definitely be higher than that. Um, then you have um, a revenue, which the federal government uh, is yet to give a full breakdown to. Even the president did not mention that in his speech, and uh, and that's a part of the challenges there. Um, so you see that the revenue is around going to be around eighteen trillion if you do the back of the envelope analysis. Uh, eighteen trillion naira revenue is a huge, huge uh, target. He uh, mentioned that as of September this year, they already have around 8.5, 8.2 trillion Naira revenue, which also shows that revenue has significantly improved uh, compared to the previous years. So I say we're going back to the fundamentals. I worry about the fact that the president did not provide the sectoral details in his budget, which was a departure from what it used to be. Um, the minister made an, uh, a presentation this afternoon giving those breakdown, but the document is still not available on the budget office website as it used to be. I also saw a point by the president that he want to focus on transparency, accountability, and, and value, uh, value, uh, value for money. So I, I, I hold him to that, that they will pay attention into the use of funds. What we have over the years is not because we don't budget or we don't get some significant revenue. It's just that the procurement system, the budget benchmarking system is crossly wasteful and does not fit into the realities of everyday Nigerians. So the president, if, he's, if they are going to say we want to reset the fundamentals, it has to go with a whole lot of efficiency and tightening of belt. And what we saw in the supplementary budget did not show that. By the time we start seeing the details of this budget, which I'm sure will come in the next few days, then we can look much more deeper to say, uh, is this a budget of renewed hope or is just a, this just a benefit budget for a few people? Because Nigerians are grounding and Nigerians are in severe pains. Yeah. I mean, uh, th this might sound like a joke, Senator and, and Cheo, uh, that uh, for someone who is called peace and likes a lot of trouble, uh, a guy who was named Freedom and spent uh, more than half of his years in prison, and uh, a fellow called Wealth, but he's one of the poorest persons that one is no, uh, that is known. Uh, a case where the president christened the budget, uh, the budget of renewed hope. Uh, do you think, in the real sense of it, there is anything to be hopeful about? Uh, is anything to be hopeful? Uh, well, uh, hope renewed in any sense of the word? In this document? Well, um, if you're going to compare this document uh, in tally with what we have had in the last eight years, uh, I can confidently say uh, there is a better credit on this than the one we have had in the past. Uh, whether hope is something you, you think it will happen, hmm? you, you guesstimate. So in, in a situation like this, I will say that it's most likely that this document is better than the one we have inherited. So we can be hopeful. We should be hopeful because at the end of the day, we will assess the document presented based on the performance. Uh, take, for example, uh, where are we coming from? We're coming from uh, a, a past that has run uh, the economic Spectre of Nigeria without transparency, opaque, without uh, a vision. Uh, but we have had now a, a, a government and a document that is promising that the pains will be temporary. And like I've heard what um, the Senate president said, uh, this is the pain of birth. Well, we will wait and see. It depends on the kind of yeah. birth. There is a session, there is a natural birth. Uh, one is, might be more painful than the other, but we're we, we, we hoping that the pains will not be too much. We should wait and see in the next 
eight to nine months. Where are we heading to? But the performance of this budget can be seen in the next five months. Are we doing something differently from where we come from? And will there be uh, improvement? But we have to look at it at this point. Uh, first of all, uh, if we are serious in this country, it's not simply about presenting budget to National Assembly and hoping that uh, automatically things will take shape. Uh, are we serious in cutting the cost of governance? Uh, are we serious in cutting frivolous importation? And what are we doing as far as investment in manufacturing and agriculture is concerned? These are all issues. Tell How do we earn more yeah. dollars in the country? He spoke about three major areas. Yes. Job creation, yes. poverty reduction, mm. national security. Yes. Those are key priorities. Do these areas, in terms of priority that he said, do they answer that question? Uh, of course. These are fundamental issues as far as Nigerian state is concerned. Like the 3 security, unemployment security, rates, security, how it can be overcome, uh, 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 over one under and something. When, we, when, we have, when you have a security challenges in a country, it takes precedent over everything. Because when people are bombed, people are killed, and you can't even, farmers can't go to their farms and people are living in a state of fear. Uh, virtually, there can't be any economy. So there must be, it must be a priority. And the issue of poverty is also something uh, that must be a priority to this government. Uh, the rate at which poverty is increasing, uh, many times in the past, people rate Nigeria as the North being poor and the South being relatively better. But it's clear that uh, poverty now has been democratized in all parts of the country. So if you allow this to reach a certain point, we'll be heading to a revolution. Mm -hmm. So they have to tackle that, which is very important. And then the issue of job creation. With the teeming millions of young people that are being churned out from our university politics and college of education, if you don't address the pro problems of unemployment in this country, we are heading to another uh, revolt. And that is why I think prioritizing these issues and making sure that funding on budgets that target these issues are, are very important as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Uh, I look at those areas and I'm wondering whether or not uh, the president might be able to drive his cabinet because also seriousness of those who will make it happen is another thing entirely. You might have a vision. If you don't have those who will make to drive it for you, it still comes to nothing. But Shion, quickly, if you can tell me, 3.76% Economic growth, that is what President Tunubu wants. In fact, it is even uh, higher than it's been projected by other international organizations. Do you think that that, that, that is reasonable, on, Nate, from your own uh, assessment? It, it seems reasonable, but it also seems like very ambitious to have 3.76% uh, growth. Let's not forget that in the manifesto of the president, he promised us 10% growth. So I can see that he's been forced to re accept the reality of where we actually are. We, um, that's a very ambitious place to be. Um, and it's not supposed to be. Nigeria should have a minimum growth of 6% for at least a decade. Before we can say we can see uh, before we can see significant changes uh, in the dynamics of our economy, um, and then if we want to generate that goal, that's why we have to look at the budget much more clearly. What is it? What does the agricultural budget looks like? What does the human capital segment of the budget looks like? What does security look like? I um, mean, it is in those details that would look like. Um, is this just a list of another project just to benefit some certain few people, or are these projects that pivot out to, to change or uh, to from some of reform in the country? Also, the quality of spend. Who is executing what? At what cost are they executing? So the culture of governance generally, all of that has to be in play before is we can Is it very have... bad, Shio? How bad is the culture of the, uh, the cost of governance in Nigeria? It's very, very bad. And we all know this. I mean, we just went through in the last two weeks, look at what we have been churned out from the state government. And if you want to go down into the federal government rabbit hole, oh, you will see um, repugnant stuff. I mean, there was a report recently of you know, uh, the SDG office paying the restaurant to build, uh, to build classrooms and things like that. So they asked the, they, they, something has to change. Recently, I found out that the president set up a committee headed by the attorney general to review Nigeria's procurement act. So I believe that he's also looking into that direction. And we're looking forward to the holistic um, review of that position 
we send our own contributions in there. About what needs to change? Because it's not just about I'm going to spend 8.7 trillion on capital expenditure. Yeah, we love that. We love to have 8.7 trillion worth of capital expenditure. Even if you achieve um, a 70 percent or around 5.6 trillion, we would be excited to see that kind of. But capital expenditure on what? And that's the question he has to reflect. Because at the end of the day. That would matter to his legacy in the, uh, uh, when he when he looks back. That he's going to get a four year or eight year term, whatever that comes to at the end of the year. If you look at also debt, we're borrowing, but I feel we're slowing that a bit of borrowing based on this projection. Because if um, seven trillion naira is our new borrowing, when you compare that to the previous years, that looks like we're slowing down on debt accumulation. Um, the deficit, I still feel that is still underestimated. They would be higher. We we'll borrow far more than what it is because I don't see us generating an 80 trillion naira revenue. Maybe our end of the year this year we might end up at 10 trillion. So I want to move from 10 trillion to 18 trillion within a year. Um, it's something that would be would be what we observe it. But it's clear that I, I, this I is pray a for a miracle. Uh, there is one Namib. guy, Zach, uh, Zach, uh, was it? I did AG. Yeah, the guy at the FRS who was a former special advisor to the. President on revenue. I understand that the guy understands how to generate revenue, and I'm hoping that there's going to be a miracle because that is another area where all of the presidential candidates in the election they boasted that they, they have the capacity to generate revenue and make more money for Nigeria. But gentlemen, let's take a breather. And when we come back, Senator, I'd like to get your assessment of President Tulubu's performance today, in terms of his presentation, the political climate, what went on, how the Senate president and the leadership of the National Assembly, how they presented themselves. Did they uh, 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 ex exert their authority in the presence of the president and the executive, or they were just trying to please them? We look at all of these issues after this break, everyone. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on the program. Now we are dissecting and uh, making sense of President Bola Tinubu's 27 trillion naira worth of budget presented to the joint session of the National Assembly today before he jetted out of the country to UAE, where he'll be attending the COP28 Climate Summit. Senator Shehu Sani, who is a former uh, Senate Committee Chair on uh, uh, the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debts has been speaking with us. Thank you so much, Senator, for your time tonight. And uh, Mr. Sean Onigminde, who joins us virtually, is a co-founder of Budget. Thank you so much indeed, Mr. Onigminde. Uh, uh, let's look at uh, some very key issues. For, for you, Senator, uh, if the president said job creation, poverty reduction, and uh, national uh, security. These are priority areas. And uh, one will imagine that uh, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, for example, will talk about uh, from uh, consumption to, to production. And uh, those who say one of the major problems we have is the over-reliance on import imported goods. Uh, those who even say, well, what do we even produce? And uh, if you produce and so much, even the oil that we have in abundance, we still rely on getting the crude out of the country, getting import. We, we still rely so much on that crude taken out of the country. And so the question will be, if we need to inten think you know, internally, and when Sean talks about revenue generation, he says maybe 10 trillion, not up to the 18 trillion that is being projected. What are your thoughts? If there is any way that this, this government needs to get things done in terms of revenue uh, generation, where would that be? Well, uh, first of all, it is necessary and important that we should accept the fact that it is going to be a Herculean tax for us to generate $33 billion within the next 12 months. That is one. And then from the statements by economists who probed or interrogated the budget. It's also very clear that we have an overbloated budget with the hope that uh, we are going to get something from somewhere which is not very clear. The president has prioritized three issues, but the question is what will be done differently from what has been done before? If it is about security, what can we do? We have seen trillions 
or hundreds of billions being pumped to Nigerian security apparatus, and it has not been able to address the problem of terrorism and perverse event security across the country. We have seen the attempt to address the issue of poverty by sharing grains of rice to thousands of people around. That has also been able to address the problems of poverty. We have seen how the conditional cash transfer, money being sent to people, that has also not addressed the problems of poverty. So what will this government be doing differently with the meager resources that is going to accrue to the Treasury, knowing fully that 27 trillion Naira is unrealistic? So these are the issues. And this is what I hope the National Assembly will play a key role. Uh, in as much as you have a president who is setting targets for his ministers and who tells them clearly that you either perform or you will be booted out, I expect the National Assembly to speak truth to power, to speak to the president directly. Being a former senator and uh, being a former opposition leader, I mean, now in the position of the, office. The kind of national assembly we have today, can they do what you, you think you are asking? Uh, well, or you, maybe you are tasking them too much? Uh, well, it's not taxing them. It is the responsibility. They are members of the parliament. The parliament is not a unit of the executive. It's not also uh, an appendage of the executive. When you are there, you have a responsibility and duty. You are elected there just as the way the president is elected. And your duty is to hold the executive to account, perform your oversight function. One of the problems we face today as a country, all this issue of treasury being looted, central bank being pillaged, and there's so many things that happened in the last uh, government, all has to also do with the complicity, the collaboration, and the failure of National Assembly to do its duty. If you want a president to succeed, it's not to praising him. It's not to say everything that he has done is right. It's simply to put him to task. He has a vision. He has a mission. He has an agenda and then the resources of the country are available for that. How are you going to implement these things? Sir? These are all things which we need to oh, do. Because there, there, there was a we, governor, Godwin Obaseki. Yes. He was saying consistently, and the, the, he was rebuffed by the federal government at the time, when he was saying that mm, CBN was printing money, albeit an illegal way. Uh, it was in this country also that there are those who say that the ways and means are not properly, I mean, it's not, done, it's not being done in the right way, and it's under a president, under a national assembly, and all is being done. Yes, I mean, when the, the, that administration left office, a lot of uh, people are now talking about ways and means, printing money, and all of that, and it comes to what you said, that the national assembly must do its job, but, if you look at the presentation and appearance of President Tinubu today, if you want to assess the National Assembly in terms of their own role there and what the president brought to the table, how would you assess both parties? Well, uh, first of all, uh, starting with the president. Well, he has observed the protocol in the parliament and he has spoken with such confidence and charisma, uh, better than the way President Buhari was able to do. And he also speaks with uh, an aura that he knows what he is saying and also he has a mission to accomplish. That is that. But as far as the National Assembly is concerned, I have seen that they are still being timid, obsequious, and still trying to uh, transfer yeah. that culture of praise singing to, <laughs> to the president. And I don't, I don't think that will help him. Uh, a budget has been laid before you. How will that budget at the end of the day address the problems of Nigeria? If at the end of the day, that budget has not been able to help the poor woman in the market, the families who want to take their children to pay the school fees, the rent or the tenement, or it's not going to address our infrastructural deficit, or it's not going to address the problem of unemployment, all those things here are indices that will be uh, engaged at the end of the day. Then. The National Assembly's duty is to put him to task. You have an agenda and you have a budget. So for us as a parliament, we're going to hold you account to what you say you're going to do with the resources of Nigeria. I think that will be helpful to this country. But where you have a Senate president and a speaker 
uh, and also the members of National Assembly uh, pressinging the president. Well, it's not unusual. And he's supposed now not to have, to have the privilege of being supported and being pressed. If you look at what happened in Buhari's government, this is what happened in the last eight years. Uh, Buhari started as a popular figure. When he comes to National Assembly, there is so much uh, presses on him and uh, so much support and uh, collaboration for him to succeed. But at the end of the day, when targets were missed and the country was going down the drain, there was a response. So now he will have that privilege. But I hope he sustains that in the next two to three years. If the government performs, its popularity rating will increase and it will be in the best interest of the country. Right. And if he fails, and next time, next year, he will not find it difficult to come to the National Assembly mm -hmm. because I know there are people who are going to respond. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you look at it, 3.76%. That is the economic growth estimation of President uh, Bolatunobu against an IMF projection of about... In fact, there was a downgrade by the IMF about a possible economic growth projection to about 3.1%. But if you look at it, in all of this optimism, um, uh, all the indices that, that are available, uh, just like the way I asked uh, Senator Sani, if there is one way that we need to look at in raising <laughs> revenue, uh, if there's going to be any magic to be performed, where would this magic or this miracle come from? I, I think you mentioned the right name. Um, and you mentioned about Mr. Zak Adedeji. You know, um, I think that's where the magic will come from. And I think Mr. Taiwo Idele, who is on the President's uh, Special Committee, also alluded to this. Um, tax um, waivers has, has to be put on the table. There has to be a big conversation around, I mean, the, Mr. Taiwo Idele mentioned, around 18 trillion naira is lost annually to tax waivers, uh, I mean, given to different sectors of the economy. Those have to be put on the table to be able to properly define. And there has to be some use of technology identity systems, also capture effective taxation. Um, I'm not saying that tax Nigeria much more. I'm just saying that businesses, every individual should pay what is fair and what is right and based on the current laws or the current rates that exist. If there's more efficiency in terms of collections, I can bet that um, we'll be able to move forward on some of this revenue um, position. The other part, again, that I think uh, there's opportunity, there might be the high revenues. Um, definitely, I mean, we've sunk, I mean, previous government sank below 1 million barrels per day at some point, despite the fact that oil prices were, off, were at the roof level. Um, it's very critical that the government ramps up um, crude oil production. I think the recent reappointment of Mr. Um, Mele Kulo Kiari also speaks to the fact that President Tinubu is um, he feels confident in his ability to do things right. But in that ability to do things right means that production levels have to go back up again. Um, if we can take advantage of the current rise in oil prices, then definitely what's the point of having crude in the first place? So that's another angle where things need to look differently. Um, it's still going to be about efficiency in terms of collection, um, the appraisal of the tax waiver system, and also being able to ramp up crude oil production as fast as we can. The other things of the government has to also look at the independent revenue agencies. If there's one success um, that the Buhari administration had, uh, and when you look at the fiscal component, it was the increase in the um, revenues generated from independent agencies. I mean, I'm talking about government-owned enterprises that, that are supposed to remit surpluses to government. There's still much more, uh, there are much more that can be squeezed out from these agencies because yeah. I don't think um, 1 trillion or 1.5 trillion is the best we can get from them. We can get much more. And now that we have a devaluation on the table, which means they are supposed to end much more in Naira, the government needs to sit up and look into the efficiency around those agencies. I, I think right. that's where the chances yeah. are. I'd like to wrap up the conversation now in just 60 seconds. I'd like to begin with you just in 30 seconds, Show, If you have been given a job for six months, President Tinobu has been in office for six months, this is enough time to be able to prove your mettle. Uh, does this government look serious enough like a government that will get Nigeria restarted? In 30 seconds, Show. I think um, the early signs show uh, mixed messages. So I will not, I will not score an A. I will not even put a B, maybe a C. Um, there have been both to do some certain things where the previous government have not dared. 
Um, but there are still challenges around efficiency and use and also prioritization of citizen mm. um, um, interest. Uh, there are right. still issues around that. There is, needs to be a minimum wage on the table. There is need to be a huge palliative incentive structure. We have not seen all of that. All right. So, um, yeah, that's where I will put it. 30 seconds. Do, does the Boa, I mean, Tenobu government look like a serious government that Nigerians need to? Because we need to start taking ourselves seriously more than the world even takes us. 30 well, seconds. Well, the difference is that uh, under the last government, people suffered for eight years. And under this government, they say it's going to be temporary. So let us see how temporary the suffering is and remain hopeful that tomorrow will be better than today. Senator Shogun, always a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much indeed. A former Senate Committee Chair on Local and Foreign Debt and Mr. Shogun Igbinde, co-founder of Budget. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time tonight. And that's how we wrap up the show tonight. Many thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm Shogun Akimale. Bye-bye.